Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. And this one is a bit of a special one for the farm because I'm going to do a car review. I'm not going to do it on Harry's Garage because it's all about the farm Defender hardtop. So this is the commercial version of the new Land Rover Defender. This is a D200 form and I have had this car now for 12 months on the farm and done over 10,000 miles and it goes back next week. Well, I'm a bit miffed really, but I've learnt an awful lot about running a Defender and how it works on farm. There's some good bits and there's some bad bits. And I'm gonna run through all of that uh, from a farmer perspective. Okay, the first thing you've got to understand about this Defender is I have never washed this car in 12 months. And look at it, I can't get over how well this colour seems to work. Car, this is an optional extra, this particular, this metallic green, Pagia green paint, £895 option. I made it so it was also on the roof as well. You can have a white roof if you want, you can have a white panel here. But when I spec the car, I didn't really want it to look like a, a van, and I went for this. As I say, I have never washed this car at all and it still looks very smart to me. A key thing I think I did, I put mud flaps on. I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for mud flaps. I think they do a really good job and they're almost essential on this car. If you want a car to look like this, they're a 160 pounds, I think. Front classic mud flaps, they're called. The other thing about this um, D200 is I wanted the spec with the steel wheel. So this is base spec and when this car was new, it was 44,210 on the road before options. The car, as optioned up as we go around it, was 53,202. So it's very easily to spend quite a lot on options, but I'll take you around those as we go around the car. So yeah, number one, I'm really impressed of how clean it's kept. There are, the other thing I've noticed on it, it's big, you know, that's quite a height and it's high and when you get in and out of it, if I quickly open the door, it's quite a step into this car. I love the way it's got rubber mats. We'll go around the interior in a moment. But what you have to remember, if you get the base Defender, it does not have air suspension on it. An air suspension would have a normal ride height and then an off-road ride height. Because this is steel, coil sprung, standard as you get in. It's basically at off-road height all the time. Hence, it just looks chunkier. Now, another thing around the front, a negative point, these lights, these lights were premium LED headlights with signature DRL, 350 pounds. They are rubbish. I, this is the worst modern car for headlights and driving at night that I know. You can barely tell the difference between dip and main beam inexplicable to me because modern headlights some of the led lights out today are just amazing new range rover has amazing led lights this one terrible lights what else is there at the front um i hate this checker plate because it's just plastic i'm not it's sort of do you stand on it what are you meant to do on it i'm really not sure what that's all about underneath i did put some protection on it if you go i might just grab the camera um if you go right underneath you can see i have this metal plate here bash plate and protection down there that actually got bashed when we did an off-road event it's quite an expensive option front expedition protection system with undershield 1278 pounds for that the options on it i don't understand those black rails they were extra 330 pounds to have roof rails if you want to put a roof rack on it that's how much that costs little thing on the outside i've noticed this snapped off within days of having it it should go in there it won't stay in there i have no idea why the ad blue over 10,000 miles well i've never put any extra ad blue in it a good thing is the tank gives you 500 mile range um, if you're not doing any towing or anything and you're doing sort of longest journeys uncovered spare wheel and you'll notice these tires are not off-road tires they are the standard fit all season tire they are amazing i uh, i regretted not ticking off-road tires when i originally spec the car it was too late to change the spec and it came on these road tires having lived with the car for 12 months these are the tires of choice i would not bother with off-road tires there is technology on this car for off-roading 
that is off the scale. It does not matter what tyres you have on it, unless you're really extreme off-roading. The um, standard all-season tyres do the job. Obviously, on the Defender, you get this single door. One peculiarity with it, it's soft clothes. Why would it have soft clothes on a Defender commercial? But it has. But it, this is a bit of a problem area on this Defender if you're actually using it for work basis. One, this is quite narrow and you, it's surprising how little you can get in here. And two, it has that flipping bulkhead. Now this is a legal requirement and if I owned it, it would be out in an instant. It's, it's quite easy to remove. There is companies that remove it and they can actually put rear seats in here if you want as well. But it just really limits you what you can get in the back of here. And I have often found myself, um, the other annoyance on this is actually the, this tailgate, you can't lock it in position. So if you put something in the back, I've had instances where this is then starts swinging around and you can see how I've managed to bash up this. This is, I just tried to carry a rake, went down a field, completely smashed up all this, but I'm, I just didn't realize how much this would swing about. And I often end up having to strap it, the handle onto there or something to try and lock it. If I've got something poking out here, it's just badly thought out if you're using this thing as a van. Then there's this cubby hole here. Now, it's okay, it's nice having this cubby hole here, but if you've got anything in here like this, then it's quite hard to access. And then like here, everything gets trapped. And then this, yeah, that's got a stone there. You forever trying to get this to lock, because there's, yeah, there's, I don't know where that stone, there. Oh, now that won't, that won't lock in position because there's muck around here. Oh, it's just, it's just badly thought out. So that really annoys this blessed thing. On a more positive note is the electric tow bar, which I'm gonna press a button here. And then when I've got a trailer on, I can actually press this light and then test all the trailer lights as well. So I really like that. It's very useful to have. But again, other mistakes. I can't get over the soft furnishings in here. That is the standard sort of armrest that is on a normal sort of civilian um, defender. Dogs are going to love that to chew on and things. It's just not protective. I would expect it to have a sort of slab side or something that's to protect all this space in here, but it hasn't got it. Another option I went for was a bright rear scuff plate. I just felt that I ought to have some protection here. That is that bit of metal there, just to protect this sort of bumper, plastic bumper here. That's quite expensive. I hadn't quite realized the price of it. 516 pounds for that bit of tin there. Seems quite a lot of money. And then, if I just close this up, you, the rear view mirror is quite interesting on this car. You can sort of see that grid in the back of that bulkhead in there through the window. And then with this spare wheel here, it's quite a, not a lot of space to see behind you. So they give you this uh, camera here. So you can either choose to have a rear view mirror and look through this sort of periscope or a, a camera there looking behind you. What I found with this camera is it actually hides a car, it can't see a car. So a car can come behind you or something here, that camera doesn't see it. From there on, I'm invisible. And that seems a bit weird because that's what a rear mirror, I would expect to tell me there's someone standing here or there's a car parked here and you won't see it on there, but you do see it with the mirror. And I tend to use the mirror at most of the time. What else is there? I want to just quickly show you the engine. Now this is this new Ingenium engine. There's a big cover as they always are on these things hasn't used any oil um, and it what gets me is it's quite a big engine it's a three litre straight six diesel straight six the, initially when the defender was first launched it had a four cylinder engine they soon moved to this engine and i think it's an absolute peach of an engine it's turbocharged they call it mild hybrid basically think of it it doesn't have a hybrid, it doesn't have a big battery on it or anything, but it has a, a generator come starter motor sort of alternator thing that means you don't let that cranking sound when you start the car. So this thing is producing peak torque from 1200 revs onwards. And it just is a really grunty engine, even though this is the lowest spec, this is a D200, 200 horsepower, 
I have found it a really nice unit, even when towing, etc. You can't buy a D200 now. You, it starts, the range starts as a D250, so it has 50 horsepower more than this car. But at no point in the last year have I felt shortchanged by this engine. Okay, another lovely thing I think on this car, I've briefly showed it before, just the rubber mats. Um, these are fantastic. I, again, you can take these out. So you can, they, these pop out and they sort of hold all the mud and rubbish and it's dead easy to clean this car. Another really nice thing I love, uh, have, having just proper door bins, you get all sorts of rubbish in there as well. And then the dash itself, you've got these sort of cubby holes for keys and things. So I really like the interior on this car works very well it's quite a long way to the windscreen anything it's sort of it's sort of narrower there than you expect it to be say so i haven't even cleaned the interior as you can probably tell so there's a lot of sort of harvest dust all over this this sort of neoprene finish is really good rather than leather um talking of leather though the one box you have to tick is uh, 50 pounds to have a leather steering wheel otherwise it's quite a nice nasty plastic finish and it has little sort of mold bits on it that catch your hands now this car has this flip down seat as well so i can push that up so we've got three seats we have dog hair in here the stanley's been in here as you can see that is with that's been a huge bonus having this uh, flip seat because it sort of doubles up as a nice armrest and etc but every now and then it's very useful to have a third person if you're going down a field you're taking someone down whatever i don't think it's available it's an 800 pound option or thereabouts when we got it and looking at the price list it's no longer available which might be a sort of supply side or something like that now i was talking about the start but if i press start now yeah does that pause it's, you can hear the sort of diesel from on it, but I just love the way there's no sort of starter motor cranking as you start up. Very easy layout of dash. You see on here, the initial parts of the DARS are actually on the LCD screen, which is a bit peculiar. Electric power steering on here. I've got the cruise control there. I've control um, radio volume, etc. phone calls. The connectivity on this car, absolutely amazing this pixel pro this new system that right across the uh, jag land rover range instantly connects carplay never drops out is instantly as soon as you walk into the car no cables need no nothing from going from the bottom of the pile for connectivity they're at the top of the pile i cannot fault this and i haven't missed having the big screen i quite like this narrow screen and i love how it's sort of old defender you sort of end up with stuff like that i think there's a diesel or a seat just typical defender on all that sort of thing now i'm in a very this field has the most testing slope in it of all and the only car that's ever got up this slope i'm about to do was actually the spectre defender i have been up it in this as well as a demonstration i thought i'll go and do it now what i hadn't thought about was it's just rained. So whether I'll actually do it or not, I don't know. But this is the black slope on the farm. As ever, everybody said, oh, I could get up there. You will not get up this. The last bit of this slope is near vertical. Here we go. Are we going to hit it? And, oh, and there you go. <laughs> the off-road ability of the new Defender defies belief. I look underneath, not that special. I can see it might catch here and there doesn't seem to be an issue for this car i don't know what clever trickery is going on here i've i select mud ruts program selected that seems to lock the diffs up unbelievable unstoppable even though it's on sort of all season tires not even on off-road tires i am deeply impressed with what this thing can do off-road astonishing but it's even better actually on road so i'm going to leave the farm now and then we'll just i'll uh, give you a little explanation on road how it performs there now quite unlike previous generation of defender one of the best bits on the new defender is basically its refinement it's it's sort of it feels modern it feels very close to Range Rover and Discovery and the way it goes down the road and there is it's a very clever chassis but it rides well this is relatively hard sprung in a way because it has to it's only got fixed springs and it's got to carry its payload and trailering and off-roading etc but I find this 
a very comfortable car to travel around in. But it has something I've noticed as time's gone on. And I don't know if the microphone is going to pick this up. But the doors, the doors chatter over the rubber. There you go. It sort of structurally moves. And the giant great big door in the big hole and all the rubber seals around it chatter away. And you can, if you haven't got the radio on, all you listen to is this. Little bit of gruffness from that engine as you pull away, but it's that instantaneous grunt, and off you go. And, and you never, I've never felt this car was really lacking in power. I, I cannot get over it. it's the base engine, and I can't get over that it's a three litre straight six diesel and its peak tools at 1200 rpm. <sighs> it's terrific. Since this Defender arrived, I also got. Uh, car transporter trailer, big car transporter trailer, wide, and it's been very useful to use it with the Defender. And there's been some pluses and minus on the towing side as well. One, I adore the camera system. Now, if I would have this car in reverse, it would show me a camera and a guide to where the tow ball is and how to hitch onto the trailer with millimetre precision. What I love about it, I don't even have to have the tow bar out to know where it is. So you can get, you can just reverse up to a trailer, get out, deploy the electric tow bar, 1300 pound option, and it pops up right where the trailer is. I, I'm gonna miss that big time <laughs> for hooking trailers on and off. The other thing about it is that the engine again, even though it's the D200, has no issues putting three tonne plus because of that ultra low uh, rev torque. It just moves away. You're soon cruising at 60 miles an hour on the motorway or 50 on by roads. And relatively good fuel for such a big trailer. It did 21 mpg empty and 20 mpg with a car on it, which is pretty flipping good, actually. It sounds awful if you don't do a lot of towing, but a big three tonne plus trailer that's good going. I ought to just mention other MPG. Mid 30s cruising on the motorway occasionally hits a high of 40 MPG, but you have to be going around the M25 in 50 mile an hour zones and stuff to hit 40, but always in the 30s, which again, I think is pretty good. So the downside of the towing was there's a lot of bounce, especially with an empty trailer. I made a coffee one day and realised I couldn't actually drink the coffee, it was so shaking, uh, just the trailer pattering. I put the trailer behind my Range Rover, didn't do it. So there is a, I think it's because of the coil springs on this car and the short overhang. It's not great if you've got a trailer that is a triax or something, it just seems to make them um, a bit uncomfortable in here. And it doesn't get that much better when you put a load on. I think if you are doing tone of a 90, I would definitely tick the box for air springs. I think that would make it better um, than being on coils. But that's another £1,650 option. The other thing also, the tow ball height is much higher on this than most other cars. Now, I'm on a dual carriageway, and this is where this car just scores, and you can just eat miles in this car. It is supremely comfortable. Seats don't look much, but over distance, no aches and pains, just a nice place to be. And with the connectivity all working, you can use your ways, you can listen to podcasts, all of that, all up the screen here. Just stable, good visibility, biggish mirrors. This has been its star turn for me, was its mild munching ability. And that's why we've ended up doing 10,500 miles in the farm runabout, because quite often it was the choice to do longest journeys on. Really wasn't expecting that. And that is a complete opposite to the old Defender, in my view. A car I was never fond of. Don't understand the appeal of them. I think it's an antique. Uh, but lots of people love them. I'm not one of them. But this chalk and cheese for doing distance and on, on road stuff with. It also handles pretty well. I've taken down my testing bit of road. I can't say there's a lot of steering feel, but it has an accomplished chassis. It just feels as though it's done this sort of thing before. 
and it's so much better, obviously, than previous generation Defender. So all in all, a really nice car on road. Excellent car, in fact, and I think in heart, because I've got the road tyres rather than the off-road tyres on this example. So, with all this sort of positivity, am I going to keep this car? I was given the option to buy this car at the end of the 12 months. I'm not actually going to keep it. I thought I was uh, initially, but it all comes down to the price of this car. And I haven't really gone into detail on that. As I said at the beginning, it was 44 base. Um, this, this example, about 51, 52,000, with all the options on it. I wanted to buy this car now, £62,880. The price of the Defender hardtop, like this, 90. You can't buy a D200 now, it's D250 is the base one, is 51000 It's gone up £7,000. With options, it's £60,000 to match this. There is such demand for this car that even after 12 months of use, 10,000 miles, it is worth as near as damn it, 10,000 pounds more than when it came out of the showroom. And I can't get my head around spending 60,000 plus on a farm runabout. However good the car is, I, I'm just not in that league. And, it, and it, I feel bad saying it because it has proved to me what a good car the Defender is. I can absolutely see why they're so popular. And I should also add, being a commercial use, you could get your VAT back, but it's still a £52,500 car, and it's still about £8,000 more than it was a year ago. I think I'd rather order one and wait the 12 months. The 12 month wait for it is half the reason they've um, so, you know, got such a premium on them, and then have one. But for me, I'm going to revert back to my Range Rover. It just tows better and my old Series 1 for bundling around the farm on. Um, but every time I will see a Defender roll by, I think he's a lucky chap, because it, it is an exceptionally good car, and I can absolutely see why they've proved so proper in the market, and there is that waiting list. So there you go, that is my review of the Defender 90 hardtop. Next Harry's Farm video, we'll be back to looking around the fields. The oil seed rape is just coming through the ground and there have been a few other changes with fertiliser etc. So there'll be more videos coming along very soon. Thanks for watching.